Hey everybody, welcome in. This is a reading for whoever needs to hear this message. I don't know what the message is yet, but we'll see. Uh, whatever wants to come channeling through, just check it out. If you're drawn here by the title, then this message is for you, or at least a piece of it. In the extended, I will pull cards for each zodiac sign, uh, just to give you some individualized, more individualized, um, lens through which you can look at this reading. So uh, just going deeper and uh, trying to give you more guidance that way. Hope everybody's doing great. This is the week of, as I'm doing this, the Pluto energy has moved into Aquarius. Okay, so I bet it makes that sound when it moves into Aquarius. So I don't know, be a really good week for you. I mean, this is going to last for 10 years with the exception of September, October, November this year. Uh, but this would be a really good time now through August to just kind of observe um, what's going on for you, how you feel in this energy. It's not just one planet, right? But um, it's super impactful, okay? When things move that slow and they are... Um, Pluto is the god of the underworld. So this is about bringing up things. So you might be interested in shadow work. You might be interested in your particular lens through which you see things because that can be um, really informing how you're looking at things, right? When I was studying film, we used to talk about the viewer and your upbringing, your social... Um, uh, cultural experience shows you and uh, uh, kind of guides you in how you take in things. Do you see that? So if you come from the American South versus coming from Japan, <laughs> just, you know, uh, geographically, you're going to see things differently. And if you come from a very big family or you are an orphan or you are uh, someone who comes from um, uh, an estranged family, right? A big family or a little family, but you're estranged from them. That's also going to inform how you're looking at things. And it's like kind of time for us to take a look at that. Aquarius energy is very cool, almost dispassionate energy. It's, it's, uh, it's allowing us um, distance. Okay, Capricorn, when Pluto was in Capricorn, we were right up on it. We're right up on it. So let's get to it, right? If we're in Capricorn, we are right up on it. And it's kind of um, um, hard to see the big picture if you're so deep in the details. So there's a need for details and then there's a need for big picture. Um, neither one of them best the other one, okay? Because you can see the big picture, but then if you can't ground it in anything, so what? Okay, so let's see what's going on here. Safe travel, your guides coming through. I see gratitude. I see past life. I don't know why the bottom of the deck is speaking to me so loudly right now, but we'll talk through it. Focus. Hmm, that's interesting. Affluence and magic. Um, so right away when I said, I don't know why the bottom of the deck is speaking to me so much, right away I zoomed right in on this past life. Um, so there's a lot of, okay, I'm going to use this deck. Wow. Being totally directive with me today. Are we spirit guides? Like do this. Don't do that. Use that deck. <laughs> okay. Um, so this feels to me, um, there might be like a change of direction. I don't know what all this is over here. There's like a change of direction or a change of path. Okay, and that makes sense to me with this Pluto in Aquarius because Pluto in Aquarius energy is about um, we see the big picture and then we can make different choices. If we're mired in detail, uh, you know, I'm going to say it that way because I feel like there's times when it's good and there's times when it's um, inhibiting you from your growth. I feel like your guides are saying, hey, trust in this change, trust in this shift. Um, some of you, this is a karmic past life. Some of you are getting out of a karmic relationship. Uh, some of you are dealing with a person who's getting out of a karmic relationship and listen, all relationships have karma to them. It doesn't, you know, twin flame or soul, you know, soul contracts, everything 
right? This is all something that was decided um, before you were born. And it's like how you choose to work with that energy is really what is showing you the learning. Okay. If like, for example, if, if you, <laughs> if you were, you know, was it, is it seventh grade? No, seventh grade is when you start to like, boy, like the opposite sex or you like the person you like. Uh, it's more like third grade, fourth grade when girls have cooties and boys are icky and all of that kind of stuff. There's something about like, if someone had come up and said, you know, you know, uh, a, a grown up conversation with you about love and like, I'd really like to take this relationship to the next level. You'd be like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> You would, you would not be able to like, even, um, I'm getting, you wouldn't be able to even intelligence that like, it would be like, want, 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 want. But like as a 25 year old, as a 35 year old, as a 65 year old, those kinds of sentences are hopefully welcomed from, yeah, well, it's definitely welcomed from a, a particular person. Why am I saying this to you? I just feel like there's something about a quantum leap from a third grade or fourth grade perspective on relationships to a time in your life when you are now able to handle it. I feel like some of you had a person uh, come into your life earlier in your life that either they didn't appreciate you or you didn't appreciate them or they were icky or had cooties or something like that. Um, it made you feel like that. Like this was not something I was supposed to be going down the road. And you may not know that that's what the soul was saying to you, right? That that was like, hey, you, this person is supposed to be on your path uh, or is on your path. And you're going to look back 40 years from now and go, how could I have not seen this? How could I have not seen this amazing person standing in front of me? Well, you were in third grade and maybe that wasn't a thing. So um, <laughs> I will say I had a tremendous crush on someone in second when I was in second grade. And then I don't know what happened. I didn't have a crush for a long time after that. But he moved away in the summertime to another town. And I was crushed when we came back to third grade and then it was icky and who cares and all that stuff. But when I was in college, I came home college or maybe a little bit after I came home back to the town I grew up in and I went to a new year's Eve party over the holidays and he was there dating a girl that I had gone to high school with. And I was like, Alex, that's not his name, but Alex. And he was like, Mary Jo, he knew exactly. And he told me, he said the whole thing. He said, I had a huge crush on you. My parents moved to, I didn't know how to, find you or to tell you or anything like that. And it was like, I probably would have been like completely, I would have hid. If he showed up at my house, I would have hid. I would have been like, oh, no, <laughs> but now there's something about it that there's a lot of gratitude for that early meeting because there was something special about it. There was something special back then. There was definitely something special and that needed to kind of plant a seed or something. Um, focus and affluence and magic. I feel like that's a different lesson or a different uh, conversation. It's almost like there's this romantic situation going on that is coming up or going to show itself again while you are focused on other things. OK, while you're focused on your own work or focused on your own life. And like, that's kind of it. That's kind of true. It's like self-love. Focusing on self-love is expanding. Um, you're not really focused on this right now. This could be a message for people who aren't really focused on a love relationship or have um, kind of just said, OK, I'm putting that to the side or it's not like the most important thing right now. My health is the most important thing. My money is the most important thing. Um, doing uh, healing work, shadow work is the most important thing. Whatever it is, I feel like that's bringing in this person. Okay, affluence and magic. And affluence can be anything. It's like an abundance of anything. So it can be love. It can be money. There's something about resources. I keep getting that word. Okay, King of, <laughs> King of Wands underneath the world, the emperor. Wow, Ace of Cups. Wow, Knight of Wands, Three of Cups, and the Eight of Cups. This person is, look at this, Lovers and Fool. Wow, okay. 
So this person, it's almost like it goes this way. So this person has is taking a risk to come toward you. There's somebody taking a risk to come toward you. I feel like, you know, there it's like planes, trains, and automobiles almost to get to you. Maybe you live at a distance. Maybe you live somewhere else in the world or something like that. I feel like this person, I'm seeing Sag, Gemini, Aries, Leo. Um... There's an offer of love coming from a person who's a life partner, who's going to be a life partner. You might have met this person a long, long time ago. This is past life, obviously past life. And here, you know, King of Wands, it's like King of Wands and the Emperor, both fiery. Um, the Emperor is all the four, um, all the four uh, uh, elements. So this person could be seeing you as someone who has everything, who has all the things, who has an abundance of things. I feel like this person has finally embraced their intuition. I think they have very strong intuitive guides or something like that. They might not have been trusting their intuition up until now. They definitely did walk away from something. Okay. They definitely did walk away from something. So what's coming out here? Hierophant, Six of Cups. It's almost like a where have you been all my life kind of situation. Yeah, Knight of Cups. Person could be younger. A little younger. Not a lot younger. But you could have met when you were teenagers or early 20s or something like that. Because there's a lot of there's a lot of teenagery energy here. <laughs> that's that's love and passion. Okay, there's a lot of teenagery energy here. And I just feel like this is somebody that you um, should have married or they now know that they should have married you. You're the one that got away. Not no more, not, not no more, he's not, right? Like, okay, chariot, lots of fast energy here. Nine of cups, queen of swords, ace of wands, 10 of wands and the seven of pentacles. So this person had to make a decision. This person had to make a decision based on love and passion, not based on money or practicality, right? The Capricorn energy of practicality. Um, I feel like this is very impractical in some way that you're like, how's this going to work? I think I've said that to you in other readings that, um, y'all are like, okay, stopping yourself because you think it can't work for some reason. But I feel like this person has made a choice. The choice has been made. The decision has been made. Okay. And it's like, they are coming toward you. Nine of cups is a wish granted. Um, you know who I'm talking about. This is for a group of people who've already met this person, maybe a long, long time ago. And this is not somebody who was a narcissist or a toxic karmic for you at all. This is somebody who you just did, couldn't see it at the time or they couldn't see it at the time. This is not somebody who was toxic to you. Okay. It just didn't go anywhere because this other person couldn't see it. I feel like this other could, person couldn't see it. If you know who I'm talking about, you probably could see it at the time. And this person is going to take a risk. This is like a big risk. Like a really big risk. <laughs> what am I getting here? Because it's like he's willing to get rid of those six pentacles and take the ace of pentacles and a goat, right? Like willing to move away from something that was stable Right, the Eight of Cups is not about something that was terrible. Although I will say that Five of Swords uh, was on the bottom too, but it may not have been terrible um, all the time. Okay, uh, to choose that, but it's sort of like I've, I made it a, a choice that was safe. Air quotes. Okay, um, this person is taking a big risk. Okay. Um, what do they want here? I, I do feel like queen of swords. I feel like you're, uh, in the Aquarian energy star. There's Aquarius star. 
Nine of Swords, Page of Wands. Okay. Five of Swords. There's that Five of Swords again. I feel like some of you listening to this are going to are are going back and forth in your head about no, it can't be that person. That's wishful thinking. Okay? Wishful thinking is a projection of something that has no foundation in reality and um I feel like this there's a certain um Oof, what's the word I'm looking for? A certain um, surprise factor, wow factor, a certain major uh, shift for you in order to embrace this. It seems unlikely, okay? It seems unlikely. And I feel like you keep telling yourself, I feel like you keep shaking your finger in your face and saying, stop, stop with this nonsense, stop with this. And yet, Every once in a while, your intuition kind of pokes through. The guides kind of poke through and say, well, could happen. All right. And you're like, no. All right, guides. Magician. Uh, you're manifesting this. Knight of Swords. Judgment. Temperance. Beautiful energy there. Um, I feel like you have said to the guides... All I want for Christmas is my one true love. And you may not have put a person or a, uh, any kind of expectation on that other than what does it mean to you to have true love? And that's where the manifestation can go forward because there's something about when your logical brain gets a hold of things that it says, well, they live a thousand miles from me. Um, they've been, um, I think they're, I think they're married. Maybe they're not. Maybe you haven't talked to them a long time. Maybe you don't know. Maybe you're not really picking up on that, but I almost feel like this person has, uh, made up their mind. They've made up their mind. I keep getting this, this movement energy, the fool, knight of wands, chariot, right? Page of wands. There is movement here. They've also done some kind of quantum leap or quantum healing. Now, maybe that's you, especially in terms of your ability to manifest. Done some kind of quantum leap. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Um, yeah. Okay, let's clarify. Um, Nine of Cups. Well, let's, let's clarify timing a little bit here. Now, this could be different for each of you. Take what resonates. Uh, some of you, this can be. The summertime, Same, some of you, it could be September. Some of you, it could be May. But any kind of help with, um, I just randomly said those months. So, okay. Um, May. As I was just saying that, what came into my head is that Pluto goes in retrograde, still in Aquarius, in May. Okay, and three weeks from now in time for their birthday. So whenever this person's birthday is, you may not know when their birthday is. Um, something is happening three weeks from now. And then something is happening in May. What is happening three weeks from now? Six of Swords. Okay, Six of Swords. Look at this. Another, like the Eight of Cups. Moving from uh, rough water to stiller water. Miss Stiller. <laughs> ben Stiller water. <laughs> no. Calmer water. <laughs> what is happening three weeks around? Yeah, look at that. Eight of wands. Big conversation. Six of pentacles. Okay, this person is going to... You see how this is sort of like... Um, it's one man down, one man up, one man down, one man up. There's kind of like a, a flow or something with this water in this conversation. There's a um, and same thing here with the temperance, with the two of cups. The, there's a flow. There's a, uh, it's um, requited. 
We always hear about unrequited love, but this is requited love. This is love that flows two ways. This is not somebody that you're going to be like, mm, I wish it wasn't them. This is the person that you actually will want to have coming toward you. And again, I want to say this to you, have done a lot of healing, have done a lot of, of, of uh, work on themselves, also reflecting that you have done that. Self-love has been a very big part of this. They've chosen themselves. Maybe they walked away from an abusive situation or a difficult situation that needed healing. They couldn't come to you unless they had a full cup. All right. They couldn't come to you unless the cup was being filled in other ways. You too, you must have your cup filled. You cannot pour from an empty cup. So you can't be in this connection without, with an empty cup. Okay. All right. I'm going to dive deeper into this. I'm going to look at each Zodiac sign in the extended. There's a link below. If you want to continue on with me, I'll see you over there. All right. I hope you enjoyed that video. If it was helpful to you, please consider liking this video and sharing it with anybody who might have a need for similar kind of information. And if you like this video, check out these videos.